Hey, what's up, guys? We're here with Adam Weidel from Virtual DJ, and he's going to show us 8, the beta. It's not ready yet, but he's going to show us some great features on this. He's been doing this presentation all week, so his voice is a little rough. Forgive him, but he's doing his best for us. <laughs> we might do this in a couple of different videos, so bear with us. Give us a little taste of what we're going to be talking about. Thanks, Brian. Uh, the, today we're going to be looking at Virtual DJ 8. We're going to look at uh, some of the cool new features that we're implementing and uh, and give you guys a taste of what's to come. And there's more to come than what we're even going to show you. Absolutely. This is just where we're at right now as of August 2012. Um, this is going to be your new default skin. We've changed the layout, but it's still got the same functionality and user friendliness of the original version. Some of the features that we have implemented and have been asked for by the users is the ability to change the font size in the browser, which has been a huge thing for people that have a hard time seeing to begin with. Yeah, I noticed that too. <laughs> so so um, there are going to be shortcuts put in. Right now I have them set as keyboard shortcuts. I can just press wow. my plus button make a, and we can go as big as you want. <laughs> and we can go right back down to regular size. Other cool features about the browser is we now, if your if your pane settings are too small, it will now scroll the entire track back and Ooh, forth. So if you're one of these guys that have a lot of information, they like to have their genre, BPM, key, number of times played, and all these fields are filled right up. They can still see the track that's highlighted, so we'll just go back here, and you can see. Well, it's very hard to see that. Adam, can you zoom in on that? That way, they can probably see it. Can you zoom it at that point where it's scrolling? Absolutely. That'd be kind of cool. So if it goes big, then no. Yeah. See, there it is. Definitely so see that. We obviously our our artist paint is completely too small to see. <laughs> yeah. But we'll open it up a bit here so you can see it a little better, and we'll. We don't need genre being that big. It can be dragged. Other cool feature about the browser that I really liked is now we can reposition. You can put genre at the front if we want. You can put it in any other order that you'd like. We we're very limited on 7. We were stuck to a certain format. Now you can just move it around at your, cool. at your leisure. <laughs> Another big feature that a lot of uh, users asked for was the ability to highlight tracks in some way or another. Now we've opened that up. We can now right click on a song. We can go to the file info pane where a lot of our users are familiar with. It looks like not much has changed, but you'll see that we've got this color here now. What does it do? We click on it. We can go into the spectrum, choose a complete color that you'd like to use, make a custom color, or just choose what's there click OK, apply, and we'll move off that track and now you can see that it's highlighted in your color of choice. And you said this, any color windows can produce essentially you can do? Absolutely. The, the spectrum is you can make custom colors if it's got to match something you know the code for it. You suggested maybe you know red would be don't play or explicit and maybe green would be your big tracks and that's great you can do all kinds of stuff like that absolutely it's completely up to the user they're obviously going to need to know what colors do what in, right. their, in their mind yeah. um, but we're not going to limit you um, for guys that are mobiles and they do they do a lot of mobile work sometimes they will especially for something like a wedding where they have a filter folder and they put all their tracks in it they put their uh, one folder for do not plays, one uh, folder for must plays, one sure. folder for formalities. Now they can put it in all one folder and they can change the colors of the tracks so they know Perfect. exactly what is what. Perfect. Um, so that pretty much covers the new browser features. Um, very cool. Um, it's nice to have these things. Um, also the search feature has, uh, has changed as well so you don't have to put things in progressive order as you type them you can type in artist title you know parts of things um, like I know I have some Skrillex on here uh, we can type in Skrillex he comes up I don't have many Skrillex tunes so that was probably a bad example but you could type in part of the part of the song title part of the artist and, and sort things it that way out as you go. 
So this is a preview of Virtual DJ8. This is a beta. It's still in development, but we want to show you some really cool features about the software that we're working on constantly and we're completely adding new stuff all the time. We've gotten rid of cue points altogether. We're now doing what they call POI. It's points of interest. So we can right click on a track. It'll bring up your pane. You can actually mark the track and it with an auto mix point, your first beat, it defines the breaks, the end of the break. Um, it's a completely redefined uh, audio engine built from the ground up. I've done a couple tests, so you'll see them in here, new POI. We can go in and actually rename that to, let's say, Remix 1. And it asks you, is it also a cue point? Well, I don't really want to make it a cue point for this demonstration, so I'm going to say no. So it won't leave a mark. But what I can do is I can drag that line around, and I don't know where exactly that is, so I'm going to zoom right into the waveform, which gets kind of crazy, and we're going to put it right about there. That's a downbeat. And we can zoom back out. Now what will happen is this is a remix point. So if we go into our sampler, we have the option for remix mode. This is still something that's being developed. We don't have these in yet, but you can choose to roll, insert, or mix into something else. Neat. And then there's going to be other options to loop, continue, or block. Um, not sure what the block option is going to do yet, but we obviously loop or continue through with the rest of the track or self-explanatory. And you can always get to your cues or samples and define them in here as well. So you can have them in the panel of the side or you can have them here. It'll show. The other thing about the sampler is that we have the default samples, the things that everybody's used to that we've had forever. Sure. You know, they got the siren. The cool thing about this is you can change the pictures. Oh, neat. They don't have to be like that. <laughs> we also have an instrument section where you can put in your samples, drum beats, whatever it may be, neat. make your own. Um, you can you can actually go into them and edit them, change them, loop them, sync start them, sync lock them, change the pitch, whatever you need to do. The other cool thing, um, you'll notice that we've gotten rid of those four tabs that were above the browser that right. let you change the panes. Everything is a pane now, so oh. we still have the playlist. It will open up the playlist, and then we have effects. Now, effects is really cool. Uh, if we go into an effect, I'll select one. You'll see I have a ton of effects on yes. this machine. Um, <clears throat> now, these aren't going to be default effects. These are just effects that I've been playing with, okay. checking out. Uh, doing what I had to do with them. So now I've brought up, by clicking on an effect, it opens up a new pane. Right. The new pane, you can control it there, or if you're getting short on real estate, you can undock the effect sure, put and put it up the side. And there's no limit to the number of effects that you can use. That's cool. So you can always pin it back if you like, or if you're done with it, you can just exit out of it. I mean, theoretically, a guy could have two screens and have a screen of effects if he wanted to. Absolutely. On the other, de on the other, the extended desktop. Absolutely. The, the possibilities are, are pretty much endless with this because we now don't limit the sampler. Um, you can build folders in the sampler. So if you have just drum beats and you have a folder of drum beats, a, a folder of bass riffs, wow. whatever it may be, there will be no limit to the number.